Before we start, I want to give the warning that I will be discussing medical procedures and obviously, from the title, a lung collapse. Please be aware of this going in, as I know some people are uncomfortable with the topic. Hello, my name is Soulheart, and I'm here to tell the stupid story of why I can't stop coughing even when it makes me look suspicious at the grocery store during COVID. The day is May 5th, 2017. The Bubbles Umi event on what used to be the English Love Life School Idol Festival, if that update has come, I don't know if it's merged with the Japanese server yet, had just started. My roleplay group was having one of its 10 day long events called Trials. The way these work is it starts on a Friday and then goes until the next Sunday. So we're on the second Friday. Characters in, are in teams of four with one leader. Characters are able to die, but for the most part they're revived shortly after. Every team collaborates on a picture of the four OCs and the team doing something related to the trial and all finished pictures qualify those teams to be in the drawing for the boss fight on Sunday. I chose this picture to talk about this life event of mine because <laughs> these two were uh, two of the OCs that I had on this trial. And one of them is more directly related to the incident in a very stupid way. And the other one just, it's kind of silly. Uh, so Candy, the one with the blue hair, May 5th is her birthday. <laughs> I had brought both of them, Jamie and Candy, Jamie being the one that's not Candy, as mentioned before, alongside a few other OCs of mine, but those OCs aren't uh, as important as Jamie and Candy, because the, the other ones, they were just vibing. The other ones, they had uh, finished their challenge already, and it's mainly Jamie's that I was focused on at the time. It's late at night, maybe around 9pm to 11pm PST. I lived in California at the time. In our team, lovingly named Angel Aura, based off of the gemstone names we had for the teams, we're busy to trying to cross a lake covered in ice, something we had been working on for at least four hours at this point. If you want to skip the overly detailed explanation of how the challenge worked, skip to the time on the screen. But I feel like the ex explanation of how this challenge worked really adds to how stupid this whole situation is. The challenge mechanics were a bit tricky to explain, so picture this. We had a Google Sheets map to move, to move our OCs across this lake. We would just put like our, a picture of them, usually their icon onto the, the, the Google Sheet and then move those icons and it would update for everyone else. Every cell in, is one space that you can move, and I believe you could only move as far as the character's speed stat was. Speed stats were a max of 5 and a minimum of 1. On top of how fast you can move, the space you are on will break more, and you can only cross the space like 2 to 3 times. I don't remember the actual count, and I don't feel like looking it up. After you cross that space the max amount of times, the space is completely broken and you can't cross over it anymore. You can't jump or anything. You just have to go around it. Same stuff will happen even if you don't move, because it counts based off of the rounds. Then, the ice lake had a hidden enemy that if you stepped on the spaces near it, you would have to, if I b remember correctly, roll evasion, which again, max of five, minimum of one. Long explanation short, imagine having to cross a n large ice lake but the ice is breaking behind you and also you can die from a giant fish if you're not careful. Because each of us had more than one OC on this trial, it took a long time to get everyone across, but that's something you, everyone's usually prepared for, because uh, the minimum amount of characters people bring usually is like two to three characters. We don't bring all of our characters, just, just two to three. Uh, I believe I took four on this one. I don't remember what my other teams were doing at this point in time, to be honest. I remember uh, having issues with one team, but the other teams being fine. I honestly don't recall what the other teams were going on with. I'm assuming they were mostly done with the challenge at this time, though, if I don't remember it. Angel Aura, however, had some slow characters and one that was afraid of large bodies of water. One of the four, Eon, was owned by one of Spica's good friends, Chi, and he 
missed his evasion roll, if, I, if I'm remembering how to dodge the large fish correctly. I could be wrong, but either way, uh, Eon died. He was killed by the fish. He, fell, he was attacked by the fish, pulled into the water, and he died in front of the rest of the team. My OC, Jamie, uh, he has a hard time regulating and recognizing his own emotions. He has uh, antisocial personality disorder, and I do my best to portray it in a respectful, ma a respectful manner. And he, he's friends with most of the team, for the most part. He likes everyone. So he didn't really know how to feel when he saw Eon get killed. The team leader, Ama, owned by Spica's own Jenna, was a lot more emotional. She's an emotional character, so she, was, she reacted very quickly to it. And the last teammate, Tatsumi, who is dating Jamie now, he wasn't at the time, but he's dating Jamie now, and he's owned by Spica's own Sunny. He wasn't emotional in the way of sad, sadness, but he was also afraid of water. And so not only did he just witness his teammate get killed, but he's also crossing a large body of water that he's afraid of. In shock from watching Eon get killed, and his fear of water, Tatsumi stayed in one place long enough to fall into the lake and also die in front of Jamie and Ama. Jamie and Ama, now left as the only ones on the lake, made their way to each other and started to cross the lake. Now that I'm done explaining what's happening in the roleplay, let's talk about what's happening in real life. Sunny, Jenna, and our last pick member, Nice, who wasn't on our team, but she was watching, uh, all four of us were in a Skype call together. Y'all remember Skype? Yeah, we did Skype. Uh, this is way before Discord was as big as it was. I think we moved to Discord about 2018. And we, we do calls with each other every day. I don't know how obvious that is from our streams. Needless to say, we were on call at this time. Nice not being on the team was still watching our roleplay in our designated chat because uh, she does have an OC in this friend group, but that OC is on a team with Candy, actually. And she's again, she's friends with Chi as well, so she was just watching our roleplay. And we were roleplaying in DeviantArt chat rooms. <laughs> this is the part of the story I remember most vividly because, well, it was real life. It was what actually happened. <laughs> I'm a very emotional person myself. I cry almost over everything. I cry when I'm mad. I cry when I'm really stressed out. I cry when I'm sad. I cry over movies. I cry over games. I cry over books. I cry over anime. I cry a lot. <laughs> um, and this also includes crying over role plays. Despite my emotionality, I also hate crying on call. And I really didn't want to mute myself because that's a lot of work and I didn't have push to talk on. I also, at the time, was living in my grandmother's living room and sharing the living room with my younger brother. And anyone could walk into the living room at any moment to access the kitchen. Sorry for burping in the middle of that. Um, I really didn't want to start crying and so I was holding it in. Did I mention I have fibromyalgia? I've mentioned it in a few streams at this point, but I have fibromyalgia. Um, I do want to make a video about it eventually, but I was diagnosed at a very young age and it's been confirmed by several doctors over the years. Uh, and fibromyalgia, it, it'll just cause pains for no fucking reason. Like uh, not only flare ups, but sometimes like my skin will hurt. Sometimes like a weird part of my body will hurt. So when my arm, my right arm and my chest started to have some random pain. I didn't really think too much about it. And then it became progressively harder to speak without feeling the need to cough. And I, I don't know if I can recreate the voice, but I was talking in a very raspy, breathy voice as well. And I didn't think much of that because I was crying or trying not to cry. <laughs> my mom called me into her room to get, get my cat sketch since he was bothering her. And I do. So I go and I get him. And I come back to my desk and I set him in my lap. And now I'm noticing I'm having trouble breathing. That's new for me. If I'm just sitting around, I don't usually have trouble breathing. 
I asked my friends if I should bother my mom about it. They convinced me, yeah, that's fucking weird. Go talk to your mom about it. And I go and do that. And I bring Sketch with me because I had him. And as I'm walking into my mom's room, I feel lightheaded. And I quickly make her way to her bed to lay down before I faint. My mom asks me if I want to go to the ER. And I'm like, ah, it's fine. It's probably just my fibro. <laughs> then I realize I'm still lightheaded, trying to get up. And uh, I decided that I should go to the ER. She starts prepping the car, and I go back to my computer to alert all my teams, not just my friends, and the, the group mods. Hey, I need to go to the ER right now. Can you ghost my characters? If you don't roleplay, that just means write shit for my characters in your own post. I leave the Skype call up on my computer, assuming that this will be a quick fix, and I'll be able to come back within a few hours. I grab my phone. At this point, it's more of like a small tablet. I didn't have cell service, but I could use it, use my Wi-Fi and my jacket, and we leave the house to go to the ER. While at the ER, they take my oxygen levels, and they're like, damn, are you sure you're having trouble breathing? Your oxygen levels are amazing. And I was like, yeah, I am having trouble breathing. So they take me in to get an x-ray done. Uh, this is where I learned that I have very long lungs. And the reason why my oxygen levels were so high is because my left lung was making so much oxygen that uh, it appeared like I had enough oxygen. <laughs> One of my x-ray technicians over the my treatment told me, hey, start telling your doctors that you have long lungs when you get x-rays taken. <laughs> this is where we learned that the pain I was feeling, my breathy voice and lightheadedness was in fact a pneumothorax, lung collapse. Now this is the funny part. I already understood how you treat a lung collapse, because in a previous trial, about a year before this, that I also cried at, I believe, one of my OCs had gotten so injured in a fight that his lung collapsed, <laughs> and I had to research how to care for that when they got back home. So I was under the understanding that I was about to have a tube put in my chest. How? I didn't exactly know. And that I'd be in the hospital for a few days because of it. Great. I download Skype onto my phone. I didn't have it before because that phone had like zero space and I prioritized Love Live over everything and told all my teams, hey, uh, my lung collapsed. I can't do my part in our trial pictures, which I had like three do and I was in the middle of working on one too. Uh, I should be back in chat tomorrow and any role play we need to do, I can do after my mom brings her laptop. From there, we have to wait in the ER to get everyone out of there. We wait for everyone to clear out until I'm the only patient there and they put me under to put a tube in me. First problem that happened here is they didn't have any tubes for my skinny body. At the time, I was about 20 pounds underweight because my body refuses to gain weight, even though all I do is sit around and eat junk food. Next problem is that because of how thin I was, they didn't want to put uh, me under too much anesthetics. So they used a little too little and I woke up in the middle of the surgery. Uh, you can have the surgery while awake so it wasn't that much of a problem but yeah uh, I wasn't supposed to be awake. <laughs> Once the tube was in they prepared to take me to the closest children's hospital. So I'm put in an ambulance to drive about an hour off of the mountain to the children's hospital. I went alone as my mom ran back to the house to grab s stuff to now spend time at the hospital with. From there, you think it'll go exactly how I thought and I'll be out in a few days. Ha 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 no. And I'll make this part as quick as I can. Um, truthfully, the events that were interesting aren't that much. And there's a lot of minuscule details from the two whole weeks I spent in this children's hospital. First, I'll say the trial in my group went smoothly. We wrapped things up in my team the next day after I got my hands on my mom's laptop. Uh, none of my teams got the boss fight and that was okay, okay with me. I was able to just chill then and do like, uh, I, I remember I did a fun little role play in Angel Aura. Next, next, the food there was so good. Considering the, they had fake meat and no caffeine in their sodas, it was so good. It was uh, some Mormon branch hospital. Uh, basically made it to where they couldn't 
eat meat or caffeine. Third, and the real kicker, I had a fever that whole time that they assumed was because of the tube being in my body, causing my antibodies to flare up because there was a foreign object in it, which is a fair assumption, and that was like what everyone pretty much assumed. And my lung was continuously collapsing, so they, what they do is they pump air, or like they pull out air or something from the cavity in your chest that's causing, that's like where the lung collapses. And so they would pull the air out and let my lung reinflate, basically. And when they would turn off that pump, my lung was continuing to collapse. On top of me having a fever, they decided, okay, we're, they're just going to take the tube out, see if that causes any change in my fever. And so they take the, the big ass tube out of my chest, the tube that was too big. When my fever doesn't go away, and my, because my lung keeps collapsing, they're like, okay, we're going to go into surgery and we're going to basically reattach your lung to the lung wall. During that surgery, they would put in a new tube and one that's <laughs> my size, like a children's tube, basically, because I was like 90 something pounds at five foot eight almost. And so they go in and this is where they learn that my fever, it's not, it wasn't because of the tube. It wasn't your ordinary, like, oh, I have a cold at the same time. There's an infection all over my right lung. They ended up not doing the surgery as intended, and they scraped off the infection, permanently scarring my lung. But it kind of did the original intention of the surgery anyways, by having the blood kind of reattach my lung to the lung wall. Two tubes later, a scarred lung and a nerve being ruptured because I coughed so hard that the tube that's inside my chest hit the nerve and destroyed it. My lung was healed. On top of all this, I want to mention, before this second tube, I was being told practically every other day, hey, your lung's getting better. You should be able to go home tomorrow. Only for to that next day, them to be like, yeah, your lung's not getting better. This happened like five times. When I was finally uh, discharged, I wasn't even like warned ahead of time. They were just like, oh, Hey, good morning. You're leaving today. I couldn't shower for two weeks because of the tube in me. Um, I was in so much pain that I couldn't even go to the bathroom easily. And they would have to bring me a toothbrush and toothpaste so I could brush my teeth in bed until I, w I got the second tube in and they started having me walk around the, the floor so that way I could get exercise. This entire time, for two weeks, I couldn't use my right arm. It was in too much pain to move. Some annoying things during this hospital stay. Well, this children's hospital had a lot of med students in it, uh, which I don't mind entirely. Except, you know, being told over and over that I was free to go the next day, only to be told that I can't. And then I had at least two nurses. It could have been more. It could have even been the same one. I don't remember. Two nurses refusing to move my I IV holes when I complained that they were hurting and bleeding because, oh, they're in a good spot. I have a very noticeable scar on my left arm in the indent of my elbow from one of those. And then the second one came after my, my, my second surgery with the, where they put the second tube in. And I had an IV on my left hand like right along my thumb. And that made it hard to use my left hand. And may I remind you, I can't use my right hand either. And I kept, I had to beg for the nurse to move it because I couldn't use my left hand to do anything. And I couldn't use my right hand to do anything. I finally got to go home after about two weeks. I uh, finally got to take a shower. Life went back to normal for the most part. And I was in 11th grade and I was doing a hybrid schooling thing with the local high school, meaning I wasn't doing online school and I wasn't doing physical school. I was going to the, to the physical high school once a week to get assignments from a teacher, a single teacher, and I do those over the week from textbooks. And he was very understanding of the entire situation. He, uh, even though I didn't finish all my makeup work, he still passed me. I have asthma now, which sucks. And I have a chronic cough, which won't go away 
and um, it's not been helpful during COVID. Because of my hospital stay, I was able to get some tests done on my uh, what we call Soli syndrome because I have a lot of undiagnosed shit, but we were able to figure out that I don't have Ehlers-Danlos and I don't think we have, I have Marfan's. And I got to see a rheumatologist for a bit before I moved out of California. I haven't seen a rheumatologist since. <laughs> Today, the day of posting this is my four year lung collapse anniversary. I figured I'd make a video highlighting the story, something I've been wanting to do for a long while, to be honest. I'm a lot better than I was back then. Still have some problems here and there. Around this time of year, I do tend to get more lung problems than usual, and I find myself sleeping on my back more, which was the only way I could sleep in the hospital. I have a, a larger knowledge about the show Roseanne because of the hospital also. Whenever you hear me coughing in streams, it's because of this. I, I'm not sick. I just have a chronic cough now. Thank you for watching. Uh, please consider subscribing to see future speed paints, see streams as they come out, and in general, to just support me. I have a Patreon under the name Soulheart, and you can find me on Twitter at Soulheart underscore Spica. See you around!